Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. Welcome to the As Seen on TV podcast for The Last Ship, season, oh shoot, season two, episode eight, Safe Zone. I see, I knew it, I said it five times in my head, and then I didn't write it down. I thought I didn't need to write it down, so I said it five times in my head, but I'm your host, Cleo, and welcome to the One Woman Podcast. <laughs> this episode, I was right about this episode, there was no action in this episode at all, but it was fantastic. I, this, mm, this is the kind of... Drama, drama. It wasn't quite drama. That's ja- That's a uh, 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 anime. Anime is st- strictly drama. Um, but this is the kind of drama that I like in my in my post-apocalyptic uh, TV shows. Um, I hesitate to compare it to The Walking Dead, but there are some there are some some things that I draw correlations to The Walking Dead, and I like it. It's good. It's good. It's a good thing. Um, yeah, no, super dramatic this episode. So, they get the president on board, and he's shouting, screaming, you know, leading in places, and, uh, I had a hard time figuring out whether, um, whether he really believed it or not, whether he was just, you know, reciting the company line, or whether he was, uh, really a believer, but, uh, we got our answer. (laughs) <laughs> While he was like yelling in the hallways, Chung was just like, "Did he like?" Uh, he was shouting about being the president and it being treason, and then Ch- Chung was just like, "Did he say president?" And I'm like, "No, dude, that's the wrong part of the sentence. I think treason was the more important part of the sentence." <laughs> I, I watched that part. I had, I watched a couple parts twice, and uh, that part. But I watched a second time. I was just like, "No, I'm pretty sure treason is." It's the more important part of that one. Um, I just thought that was funny. Mm. There was a lot of... And I like... I'm going to compare it to Battlestar Galactica again. <laughs> but I like when the captain and the XO don't always agree. Like, I love that in Battlestar Galactica. This is to a much lesser degree. Like, Slattery is not... You know, the XO from Battlestar Galactica. He's not that much of an asshole. <laughs> but he does have different opinions. And is a lot... Per- the different personalities. And I like that. And while Slattery does sometimes have an opposite opinion of Chandler, sometimes Slattery's right and Chandler happens to be wrong. Um... And I definitely want to talk about that at the end, after we discuss the president and, and those things. Uh, but I was very, Slatter was very like, we're, no, we're never going to get this, the, like, it's, it's brainwashing, dude. We're never going to get this guy back on our side. And uh, I'm very glad Master Chief, Master Chief? Master Chief had the faith um, when Slattery didn't. But Chandler was very, very invested in this, too invested in this, to where it wasn't just a, the the um, naval the the duty to your country mission it was a, a personal mission and he got way too involved um, because he really he really has something to prove because wh- as far as they've gotten they've taken so many steps backwards and Master Chief said he he needs somebody to salute to and that's not what it is. Like, yes, he's a soldier, he needs someone to salute to. Yes, but it's more... And he even, Chandler even said it, he needs to be redeemed. It's Chandler's redemption that he's fighting for, not not just the president's. Um, and I, I'm very confident that he feels like he's failing, because all of the, the shit that's gone down... That's, I'm, I'm also positive that's why he was so gung-ho, you know, we're going off the radar, we're getting into this camp, we're doing this, we're saving the president, blah, blah, blah. It's because he feels like he's failing, and any win, any win is a good win. 
and they, <laughs> boy, do they need a couple more wins. Um, but they took another step backwards with the propaganda broadcast. This is going to make it harder for them to, to move up and down the coast. Even if, I don't know how they're going to, I don't know how they're going to move inland, or I don't know how, where, where did they say they were going this time? Oh, they were going to New Orleans. It's going to make it even harder for them to get to New Orleans, for them to stop for fuel, for them to, because Slattery mentioned this, and it hadn't been, um, and it hadn't really been an issue before, but Slattery's like, we're sitting here wasting fuel, and it's like, oh, yeah, you guys are going to have to go get fuel, so that's going to make getting fuel harder, it's going to make everything harder. Got a couple more mouths to feed. Yeah, it's gonna... It's gonna suck. <laughs> um, so we... All of the scenes where... Uh, Chandler and... Jeff. His name's Jeff something. Jeff... Jeff Mitch, Mitchum? Mitch, Michener. So all the scenes with Chandler and Jeff talking are amazing. And some of them, some of them are even just like very few edits, very few like cutaways. Like there's one where I'm pretty sure the whole time Jeff is talking about the stadium. I don't think it cuts away from him. It's just, it, this, this episode was very well filmed. It was simplistic where it needed to be, where we really need to hear what the characters were saying. So not nothing fancy. But then when Chandler was going to, like, when he needed to find, because he thought he knew the real reason. So he was trying to find the president, and uh, when, he, when he was in the bathroom, the camera didn't cut, but it was mobile. There was, it just followed him all down the corridor. The light, ah, I was like, I was paying attention. I was like, oh, there's the lighting and it's not cutting because the dude is just following him with the camera. Oh, so good. And I love the, I gotta, I gotta look it up. They might film on an actual ship. They might film on an actual ship, which would be dope. Um, but I really, I really need to look up if the interiors have done in a naval ship. Because it really looks and feels like it. Um, but yeah, the president, he, Jeff tried to, to slit his wrist. He did. He successfully slit his wrists with like an exposed sharp piece of a hinge or something. It's just like, dude, you are tough as hell because not only did he do that, which would have taken force to determine, he did both wrists and he did it quiet enough that Tex didn't hear, which, god, that must have hurt like fucking hell. And to go back for another one, it's just like, oh, he's, he's really tough. And, um, I, I, I think he's definitely faced what was holding him back. I think, I believe the brainwashing is, is, uh, you know, done. Because just the way he handled that flash flash drive was like a crutch. It's like a, a an alcoholic or someone who's addicted to drugs. That's their crutch. It was the alcohol and the drugs. This this belief, this information that was his drug, and just to shut up what's in the back of his mind all the time. He just he has to keep bombarding himself with it. I like how that, that actor, ooh, I love him. He's very good. Uh, <laughs> to, to make that come across, to feel like, even, even when he knew, even when he knew and they asked him for the disc, he's like, oh, okay. Like it wasn't, there wasn't a hesitation, but it was slow enough to be like the acknowledgement of I am giving up my crutch. I cannot, you know, like having alcohol taken away from an alcoholic. It's like, no, this is for the best, but, uh, hard. Oh, I'm so excited to see what the president's got, how the president's going to president. That's not a verb. <laughs> how the president is going to president. Thanks, Obama. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah. 
this is what they, they're gonna they're gonna need a mental health counselor on the ship ASAP. If they don't have one already, they need to freaking pick one up because they need them. Um, but this this is what I like from my post-apocalyptic shows is two grown men crying, having feelings. It's like yes, this is people being people. We just we need more of people being people. And I like I I really am drawn to shows like that. It's like this is people being people. This is not a fake person. This is you know a real person. Liking it. Um, so even though Jeff, Jeff came around, the, the meeting that he had with them, it almost felt like a cabinet meeting, you know, with his chiefs of staff or whatever. Um, but there's an, there was an uneasiness in the room, especially coming from Dr. Scott and, uh, who else was there? Slattery? Probably Slattery. Um, not just that, but there's an uneasiness on the ship because we didn't see him meet too many off, uh, officers, uh, sailors, like the rest of the crew. And there's where I think Slattery might be right. The first couple hundred people that the president meets, I wrote, I, I wrote in my notes prez. So I almost just said prez and kept going on with the sentence. I just thought, <laughs> First couple hundred people to meet the president need to believe in him, and there's a, there was definitely, I mean, they said, Slattery and Mess Chief said, there's talk on the ship um, about him being brainwashed, about all this stuff. So there's already this, maybe we can't trust this new president, where'd he come from, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and we didn't get to see him do the whole handshaking thing that, that uh, Chandler said he was going to have to do. But I definitely think there's going to be some nervousness and some, and I don't think everyone's going to jump into believing him, which kind of goes hand in hand with what I think is going to happen. And I, I've thought is going to happen for a while is that the crew believes in Chandler so much and he's made a couple of brash decisions, risks that didn't need to be taken. And I think the crew's overwhelming faith is in him is going to waver a little bit. And I think that, especially since Chandler was the most gung-ho about the president, I think favor is going to slip a little. I don't think there's going to be any, like, backlash, but it's definitely going to be like, um, hold on. <laughs> We're not jumping into the shark's mouth just yet. Hold on. So, I mean, that's, that's it for this episode, Safe Zone. Oh, and the, the title of the episode was, it, it, I feel like, I love it when seasons have, uh, use, when they use uh, uh, episode titles in multiple ways. Uh, that happened, did that happen in this season? Not really, but, um. It's not a rumor. Uh, definitely, I thought it was going to be about a, you know, the rumor. The, I thought the title was going to pertain to one thing and actually pertain to a different thing. Um, but, yeah, Safe, safe Zone was about the, the Jeff's um, incident where he let his son, he let his son skip quarantine. Um, to come to him and end up affecting an entire football stadium of people. Hundreds of thousands of people uh, died. And he had to smother his, his children, which really sucks. And it's like, oh, uh, and I hate that stuff too. It's like, the wife is like, you have to do it. You're the man. It's like, bitch, it's your idea. You fucking smother your own children. I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna, not gonna touch that. I'm gonna leave that one alone. Um, but anyway, next episode is Uneasy Lies the Head. Chandler and his team set out to find supplies and materials for Dr. Scott's lab only to tangle with bounty hunters and immunes. Meanwhile, Rachel's effort to find a spreadable cure depends on the scientist who nearly erased mankind. 
I hope we get a little bit more of backstory for Niles, or at least, or not really backstory, but just a peek into his head a little bit more. Um, because he's really interesting and fucking crazy. <laughs> and I definitely think Dr. Scott is going to want to know why. Why are you continuing to fuck over the human race? Did you want to kill all of them? Is this just a power try? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I think there's going to be a little more action in this episode, in the next episode. Um, hopefully not too much. Remember, I want science. I want more science. Bring me science. Um, so that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, you can find me at Cleomoto on the socials and on Twitch at the Cleomoto. And I've said every week that I'm going to start streaming soon. And I, I serious, I am soon. <laughs> I really am. And you can find all of us at as seen on, at the as seen on TV podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google Plus, MySpace, and right here on YouTube. Follow us for some more podcasts from some of your favorite TV shows. And if you are a fan of video games, go check. Most of the hosts on ASO TV are on Serious Gentleman Gaming. I think it's Serious Gents Gaming or something. SGG on the YouTubes. And I think we're gonna have a Twitch soon. And Twitter, we're there. Just go look, go look it up. Um, it's a ton of fun. We talked about Splatoon recently and Arkham, the Batman game, and lot more other things. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye. More grown ass men crying. Oh, really? Cute.